Welcome to another developer update. I'm Jeff from the Overwatch team. We're really excited to be here today to talk to you guys about the PTR. So first off, for those of you who don't know what the PTR is, it stands for Public Test Region or sometimes Public Test Realm. Same thing, it's basically a server that players can go to to test out new upcoming changes to Overwatch. The PTR is not always available. It's something that we put up before we're going to patch the game to do testing on. One thing that I, I've noticed that there's some confusion in the community about is what is the exact purpose of the PTR. And I think a lot of players assume the PTR only exists so that players can give feedback on upcoming changes. And while this is a really important part of what the PTR does, it's not all of what the PTR is about. The most important thing for us when we patch Overwatch to all of the live service is that the game is stable and works correctly and there's as few bugs or crashes or glitches as possible in the game. The PTR really lets us iron all these issues out. We, we will put up versions of the game frequently on the PTR. Sometimes they'll have a lot of issues and it allows us to solve them very quickly. So while checking in on how the players feel about new changes in an upcoming patch is also very important to us, it's not the primary thing that we're looking at. We're actually looking the most at the stability of the game and is it running well? Is it, is it ready to go live to all of our players? So another question that gets asked very frequently is how come we don't have the PTR available for console players. And it's actually kind of a complicated answer, and it mostly has to do with the logistical challenges of running a game like Overwatch on three platforms. As many of you know, the game exists on PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4, and all three of those are unique platforms. On the PC, we run on Battle.net or the Blizzard platform, which is something that we wholly own and control here at Blizzard. That means that patching it as frequently as we want is very easy for us, um, and we incur any risk to our own system because we're making the changes. We know what we're doing, it's our game. If we screw something up, we know we're gonna fix it right away. It's a little bit more complicated for the console platforms because those belong to Sony and Microsoft. And we have a lot of respect for how um, solid and protected the Microsoft and Sony environments are when it comes to updating for different games. So it's, they have their own friend systems, they have their own achievement or trophy systems. They have to be really careful about games releasing content onto their platform and causing issues for their platform. So in order for us to put a version of Overwatch onto their platform, we go through a certification process. Now, something that, that was an issue with our player base early on was that sometimes PC players would get a patch and console players would get it at a different time. And there wasn't always a lot of understanding why this would happen. And the reason that this would happen is because we could patch the game on PC as quickly as we wanted to, but we would need to make sure to go through a certification process with Sony or Microsoft to be on PlayStation or Xbox and make sure we weren't damaging their platforms in, in any way. So it caused sometimes for there to be a desync. One of the ways that we've been able to patch all platforms simultaneously so frequently in our latest updates is because we use the PTR time on PC to help get through that certification process on the consoles. And what that means is that we're not ready to be on the console at the time that we're doing the PTR experience. So this doesn't mean that, you, you know, never will we ever PTR on console. It just means right now it's very logistically challenging for us. And part of what's enabling us to have simultaneous releases of our patches, or as close to simultaneous as possible, is using the PTR time on the PC. So I hope that explains some and alleviates some of um, the questions that have come up around uh, console and PTR. So that's sort of one of the big things that we want to get out of the way. The other question that comes up a lot is how come there aren't incentives for me as a player to come to the PTR? 
So we would love as many of you to come to the PTR as possible. We are very grateful for those of you who show up and help us test and provide feedback on the PTR. Um, so all of that is greatly appreciated. For us to put incentives on the PTR is something we're looking into. So it's not off the table. It's just a little bit complicated. So uh, to give some examples of incentives that I've seen suggested by the community that we think are great are, you know, maybe if I could get some loot boxes for coming to PTR, or maybe some amount of my experience from the PTR transfers over to my live account, that would be really cool. Um, those are things we're looking into. The, the problem that we have, and hopefully you're somewhat sympathetic towards it, is the, those ideas, while very cool would take development time to implement. And right now we wrestle with, you know, is it worth our time? Is the best way to spend our time engineering features for the PTR so players have more incentive or using that same development time and putting it towards more of the core features or content in the game that go out to all players. And up until this point, we've sort of decided, well, we'd rather you know spend our engineering time and resources towards features that everybody will get to enjoy. So hopefully that makes some sense why there's not a lot of incentives right now to go to the PTR. For those of you showing up though, it's, it's very valuable to us. Now, we are testing changes on the PTR right now that go beyond just preparing us for the new patch. There's some balance changes out there that I know a lot of you are interested in. And I'm not gonna go into a lot of specific details on each of the balance changes that are out there because by the time this developer update goes live, we might have already made different changes. So what I'm talking about might be a little bit of out of date. But what I think is important to understand is why we're making changes on the PTR to the heroes we've decided to make changes to. So first up is Sombra. We feel like Sombra is a fantastic hero. As I mentioned in the last developer update, we want to be slow with the changes to her because we, we believe she's actually very powerful and a lot of players haven't mastered how to play her correctly yet. Um, with that said, we do think she is in need of a little bit of a bump, and we have some ideas to gradually bump her up until she's in a better spot. Now, one area where we might not see eye to eye on with the player base is we don't expect Sombra to ever be sort of a vicious assassin. Even though she's in the offense category, we could equally see her almost being in the support category. We see her more as a disruptor, a backline disruptor, than a frontline flanker or assassin. So our goal is not to make Sombra kill people quicker. That's not what we're really interested in at this time. Maybe at some future time, we wanna steer her in that direction, but right now, we're really believers in that disruptor di direction. Now, Roadhog is another hero that we're making changes to, and specifically, we're addressing the hook. It's important to know where this, the, the hook feedback is coming from. So something we hear frequently is, the hook feels really unfair. Um, I didn't like that hook that happened. Here, watch this video of the hook. We as Overwatch developers don't just come at things from, you know, we're not a Roadhog player and therefore we don't like being hooked, or we are a Roadhog player and we, we don't like how the hook places certain characters in front of us. We have to come at it from both sides. We have to represent both sides, both the victim of Roadhog's hook and Roadhog himself. And when we started to look at the hook, we felt like there were unfair moments on both sides. There were times as a victim where you get pulled around a crazy, ridiculous corner. You know, there's all sorts of videos out there showing stuff like this. And likewise, we felt as Roadhog players that there were often times where the hook placed people in, in weird spots or you thought you should have gotten somebody and you didn't or you got the wrong person. So we wanna address all these things by making the hook feel more consistent. So it doesn't feel like you're on Dorado and getting hooked to point two on Ilios. Next up is D.Va. So D.Va, we feel like she's just doing too much right now. Um, as you guys know, we felt like she was a little bit underpowered before. We made significant changes to her. She, she got a big boost to her health pool, and she also was able to move faster while shooting. Now, something to keep in mind about D.Va, what we think is very important about D.Va is her mobility. 
We like that she is a tank that gets in and disrupts and also has the ability to get out when she needs to get out. Also, something very unique to D.Va that no other hero has is that she doesn't does not need to reload her weapons at all. She can keep continuous fire going as long as she wants. Every other hero has a reload moment, which is either a moment uh, for you to engage or disengage with another hero, and D.Va doesn't have that. So what, what D.Va's shooting cadence does is it allows for um, that range to exist where D.Va's no longer effective, and then D.Va needs to readjust with her shift. Well, when she's too effective with moving and shooting and diving in on people and her survivability is really high, um, add to that the effectiveness of her defense matrix, it's really hard to come up with a definitive counter to D.Va. So we wanted to bring D.Va back a little bit. We need to pull her back a little bit so she wasn't great at everything. But the important things to us were the mobility, and that shooting cadence. We feel like Defense Matrix and her high health pool already help with her survivability. But we'll keep a close eye on D.Va. We care about her as much as the very passionate community does. And if we get her wrong, we will fix her. Um, last up was Anna. Um, Anna is a great character. I read a, a thread today that said, hey, Anna should be totally reworked. We don't agree with that. We think her kit is really great, the way her different abilities interact with one another. We just want to pull back her overall healing, especially on large coordinated groups of characters. We want to tone that down a little bit. Um, so right now we're looking into changes with the grenade. We might look at other things, but we don't envision a drastic reworking of Anna. We actually think she's one of our, our cooler designed heroes, and we have a lot of faith in the design of the hero. Um, but we do think she needs to be balanced back a little bit, but not anything you know overly dr dramatic. We don't want to see Anna disappear from the game. So that's not a goal of ours. So that's to address you know why we're doing the things on the current PTR and hopefully give you guys a larger idea of what's going on on the PTR. One, one last point I wanted to make. Sometimes I hear people say, well, what's the point of the PTR? You guys don't make changes based on it anyway. And this can be further from the truth. We actually not only read your feedback very closely on the PTR, but we're looking at the statistics of what happens on the P PTR very frequently, M most of the changes that show up on the PTR wouldn't have existed in the first place if it weren't for feedback that we're hearing from you. What tends to happen is that players who are happy with the changes that we've put on the PTR are less vocal than those who are not happy with the changes we have on the PTR. So it's sort of the, the people who are, are super happy and in, in agreement with the changes that we make are less likely to spend time going to places like the forums and saying, boy, I'm super happy with everything you're doing, keep doing it. Um, and they're more likely to go there when they disagree with something. So there's usually a little bit of a bias in the feedback um, towards the negative anytime we put up the PTR, but that doesn't mean we're, we're not listening. And it doesn't mean that feedback in both directions, both positive and negative, isn't useful and valid to us. I hope all this makes sense. We really appreciate the time that you guys have spent not only testing on the PTR, but giving, even if you can't be on the PTR, giving your thoughts on the patch notes, helping us make the game better. Um, we're gonna keep making improvements in this direction and we'll keep communicating with you guys on what changes are coming down the line. Thanks for everything. Thank <music> you.